with Rivian up in Seattle and I just got done driving the new Gen 2 versions of the R1S and R1T. I've got a lot of thoughts. I've got a lot of surprises that I learned during this trip and I want to share those with you today. So if you are ordering in Rivian right now, this will be the one that you get and you're going to want to know exactly what all these new details are. Let's dive in. Okay, first off, going back, the R1 is the top tier line for Rivian, right? You have the R2, which is the new one that everyone's hot on. I think it's, I'm hot on it. I think it's going to be great. Then you have the R3, this kind of niche, uh, smaller one. But the R1 is and will remain the premier kind of flagship model for Rivian. And you have the S and the T, so the SUV or the truck. And with that, there are some significant changes here in the areas that I think that matter most, which are range performance, and price. So let's start with range. So the new range numbers for the Rivian R1T dual and performance dual are 420 miles with the max pack. That's up quite a bit. And I think it does matter. If you go on a lot of long road trips, this is going to be a big deal. Also, it means you don't have to charge every single night overnight, me giving you kind of more headspace in that way. So that's really big. And then the R1S, same dual and performance dual, now have 410 miles in the max pack configurations. And these also still charge very quickly and now you have access to the tesla supercharger network make sure you check before you go to the station and try to use it because it's not all of them but the adapters are rolling out meaning that this thing can go pretty much anywhere that you're going to want to take it certainly for me in my use case it's going to be great and it works beautifully now let's talk about price this is something that i think it keeps most people away from a vehicle like a rivian because it's a more expensive one but before we move on, I want to give an update. A few weeks back, I gave some teasers about the super secret project I was working on. Well, it's a podcast and it's still in beta. So I'm not widely sharing the name of it and publicizing it or anything like that. So if you do want to get access to it, it's totally free. But hop on the email list at the link in the description down below. You can join the Discord. You can chat with other folks that are helping make this thing better and better. You can chat with me. I'm on there almost every day. But in order to get access, you do need to join the email list. Other than that, it's totally free. So I hope to see you there and make sure to check the link in the description down below. Now back to the video. Well, now the R1T, the cheapest model, starts at $69,900, which again may sound like a lot of money, but if you go look at high performance trucks, you're going to be surprised how expensive they can get. So I am really impressed with that. I think it's going to open it up to a lot more people. And of course, there's probably other promotions and incentives and leases and all kinds of things that could change that price. But the MSRP now for the R1T is $69,900. The R1S starts at 75.9. Now the R1S I think is a good price there because that is basically a Range Rover and it is all the bells and whistles and tech stuff that I love that I think uh, the whole new generation of people getting into the higher end cars love as well. And so for me, I think both of those are really good prices. They're both a little bit cheaper, which is the right direction I think for the prices to go, meaning more people can get into them. So if you have been looking, enjoy that because you're saving some money now. Okay, now let's talk performance. I got to do a quarter mile drag race as well as a launch on the R1S and it's nuts. So there's different motor configurations. You have the dual performance dual. Now you have the tri-motor, which is a new motor variant. And then you have the quad motor still, which is kind of the ultra top end one that has all the capabilities and all that. Let's just talk about that one because when you want performance, that's what you're going for, right? Quad motor, 1,025 horsepower, 1,198 pound-feet of torque less than 2.5 seconds, zero to 60. Yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely nuts. In a truck that is incredibly heavy, but also can fit your family and just be a good daily driver. So I got to experience that. It's absolutely bonkers. It's already bonkers. I personally, it's not for me. I'm not a performance junkie. Um, but if you are, man, you are. It's even the quarter mile times and everything that you're going to see coming out here are going to basically blow the doors off of anything else in the class. So if you like performance, you've got to get one of these. And I think it's totally worth it. So yeah, great job to the team on making it even more insane than it already was. Now, the next update is regarding autonomy. Um, they have a whole new suite of sensors and radars and all kinds of things that they're doing here. As a consumer of that, what I experienced on my trip here was a much improved version of their advanced driver assist. Uh, they call it driver plus, Tesla calls it autopilot. So I may call it autopilot from here on out because it's just easier to say and it's more what I'm used to calling it. So autopilot, Rivian's version, far better than it was in the Gen 1, the one I have. Um, it still leaves me wanting more. There's a little bit of a delay when we're going around turns and stuff like that. So it doesn't give me the ultimate confidence, 
Um, and I'm comparing it to Tesla Autopilot, which not the pulse up driving one and all that, but just a straight up autopilot, the lane keep where it steers in the lane, keeps in there and speeds up and slows down. I think in, in Tesla world is as good as it gets in all the ones I've tested. Rivian is getting there. It's certainly good or much better now. I still think that they have a, a lot of room to improve. Talk to the team. They kind of agree. Yeah, it's a work in progress. We have a whole host of new sensors and, and all things. So they're going to be calibrating it, improving it and all that. They also do uh, this, the fleet learning thing, which I thought was interesting. I had a chance to talk to James, the one leading up this effort on their autonomy team. And it's essentially how Tesla does it. We're like the vehicles can actually know what's happening and feed that information back. And then in future updates, it's going to improve. And in fact, they added something that I think is really cool. That is the ability to send feedback about your driving experience. So in the screen now, there's a place where if something's wrong, the navigation's wrong or anything like that, you can click on a button and actually send feedback directly to Rivian. That right there, I think is something that's missing in the Tesla world that I wish they would add. So I'm excited. I think they're very open and they're, they know that there's a big road ahead of them. Um, there's a lot of progress, but it still, I think, has a long ways to go, which is good because that means it's just going to get better and better. There also are some interior updates, some color updates, graphics, lighting. There's a million things there to talk about. Uh, I think it looks a bit better, like you probably wouldn't notice unless you really looked and found the details. The one I'm sitting in right now is the Ocean Coast with Driftwood, which is this really light colored wood, which is definitely an upgrade. It has the bronze trim everywhere and it has a bunch of these plaid features where they have this like plaid design um, all throughout the different different touches so it's cool it's definitely upgraded not something that i think most people would really notice dramatically uh, but it is better and you know it is a little bit nicer they also have a bunch of software changes and some things that i'm excited about notably um they this came with alexa built in sorry for people's smart speakers and uh, you, you know, I don't use that. I think a lot of people disable it, but you can actually have it trigger now your uh, voice assistant from your phone. So whether that's an Apple phone or an Android phone, you can have it just trigger that instead, which is really cool. I like that. They don't have CarPlay. That's still kind of not on the cards, but I, I did talk to the team about the idea of how to make it better. And they have this new thing where you can cast your phone. So if you have Disney Plus or something like that, you can actually cast it to the screen. So if you're sitting there charging, camping, whatever, you can play things. Now, it does have YouTube built in, and I believe there are going to be more apps coming. And there's one thing, though, that I was excited about. We had a conversation over dinner about the potential of an app store. Now, I don't have any official word on this. There's no big scoop here, but they didn't shut down the idea immediately. I asked Elon this years ago on a press call and he basically shut it down and said they're never going to do it. So who knows? I think that's a miss. But the fact that they're open to that means that you, even though they're not going to do car play or doesn't appear that that will ever come, um, they will potentially have a way for app developers to build experiences into their OS and actually make it better. So, you know, you can have hundreds and thousands of apps eventually, and it's not just Rivian that has to do every single thing. So Potentially, maybe in the future, I think that would be a huge win. I think it's something they should definitely look into deeper. So those are most of the updates, the ones that I experienced and really noticed. Uh, of course, the big question is when? Well, by the time you're seeing this video, they're already happening. If you're ordering a Rivian now or you haven't taken delivery of one, they haven't made it yet. All the new ones coming out should be Gen 2, which means you get the updated sensors, uh, you get the new specs that that I mentioned below. And I'll put a link to all the specs because there's a lot more to talk about and I don't you know, I just want to talk about the ones I think that are the big ones, new UI, new cameras, all those kind of things. Lots of little stuff coming. Um, so if you have one on order, uh, good news that it should be a Gen 2 by the time it shows up. And, you know, that for you right there is a big one. So that's exciting because I hate when they announce these things and it's years down the road. Like, no, 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 we want it now. So give it to us now. But the big problem I think Rivian still has is brand recognition. And I'll give you an example. I drive around and there are a lot of Rivians where I live in San Diego. But the big question I get mostly is, what is that? Who makes it? I say Rivian and they say, yeah, but who makes it? Because they're expecting a Ford, GM, whatever, right? And that I think is the biggest hill that they still have to climb. And with what they're doing in terms of how they're launching these products, how they're really focusing on the customer, how that story is going to build and that brand is going to become more recognizable, especially as the R2 comes out. I think that is how it's going to spread. But they still have a long ways to go because I don't think a lot of people. In fact, there was a Jeopardy thing where apparently the answer to the question was Rivian and nobody got it. So 
they have a long ways to go, but the future is bright. They make great products and, you know, I'm kind of jealous now. I'm not sure. Should I buy one? Let me know in the comments uh, down below. Certainly I'll get one as a long-term loaner, but right now, you know, I'm on the fence about it. My wife would probably kill me, so, but she doesn't watch my videos anyway. So that's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I'll see you back here next time.